Okay, so you know we talk about living in VUCA world, right? Everybody knows what VUCA stands for, and uh, some of us, most of us, in fact, are in jobs, and we're talking about becoming a wealth creator, and uh, therefore you have seen already the product life cycles, the business life cycles, the company life cycles have been shortened for several reasons. And most of them are because of new technologies coming up, disruptions that are happening, consumer needs that are changing and competitors that have really made innovations so fast and people have not been able to keep up with the pace of innovations and technology and therefore have been in their own uh, kind of, uh, if I was to say, uh, very, you know, comfort zones and they refuse to come out of it. Companies like Blackberry, uh, Nokia and uh, Kodak. And these are some of the examples that, you know, suddenly they were the leaders and overnight or not overnight, but definitely the businesses became zero, right? So what is it that will definitely, now I'm talking about human skills and I'm not talking about at the company level, but definitely uh, the skills that will always make you successful and lead a life, life, life of abundance. And that's what I, you know, a lot of research and a lot of McKinsey articles and a lot of uh, insights into what is changing by the year 2050, so I'm talking about the next three decades, which uh, of course we'll see the acceleration of all these disruptions happening at a much faster pace. And uh, therefore, uh, you know, there are a lot of things happening in the environment. One is that there are aging populations that are uh, in all parts of the world, while the populations are aging. Second thing that is happening is that the number of children if we are 7 billion today and there are 2 billion children today, the number of children by the turn of the century, that is in another 80 years is also going to remain 2 billion only. It is not changing. Except that the number of older people is going to be much more decade after decade. So there is a shift happening in the age group. Second, who is really uh, multiplying and where? So if you see then that is Asia and that is Africa because most of the poor countries or the developing countries, that's where people are multiplying at much faster pace. Uh, USA, Europe, Latin America, these are actually continents which, have, uh, which, will, which are likely to remain constant in the, in, the, in the form of numbers. Population is going to grow from 7 billion today to 9 billion by the turn of century. So that is the, these are the research data. And even after growing by 2 billion, the number of kids is going to remain at 2 billion. So therefore, who's going to be growing is that the older people. The average life is also going to get become more. Now, all these, because why I'm talking about population on the earth is because these are the consumers. These are the people who create consumption. So whatever businesses we are in are because of these people. So where are they going to be located? What age group they are? What are going to be their habits? And what is going to be the, a, you know, their needs is therefore very, very relevant. So this is one part of it. Second part is, of course, what is happening to the technology. So you see that you have a blockchain coming up. You have you know, the big data you coming up, you have artificial intelligence coming up, you have robotics coming up, which already has replaced a lot of human workforce around the world. And why they went for these technologies is because the population of working class in those countries, they expect that will be reducing. So the number of people who will be in the working age group will be reducing. So they have no other option but to think of robots and there's there no other option but to think of automation. But of course, when these innovations happen in one part of the world and we live in a now borderless world, 
these innovations also go across boundaries so there are countries which have already you know the four days working in a in a in a week why because they don't have enough because a lot of automation has already taken place so what kind of society we are going to be looking at and what kind of work pressures we are going to be looking at what kind of people will remain in jobs how what kind of people will be told to sit at home right what kind of reskilling we will need what kind of demand will be coming up over the next 3 to 5 decades you know if you see what is happening in the world of technology and what kind of if you were to fast forward let's say our video of life to year 2030 there is going to be a lot of things that are that we will see around us that have changed right so uh, a lot of artificial intelligence you will see in network of things that you will see you are going to be seeing robotics you are going to be seeing uh, you you see medical technology etc everywhere robotics is coming in fact nano robots have robots have come in which can be put in your eye they can go do a surgery in your eye and they can come out after doing the repair you have robots that you can swallow that can go inside you and they can repair and they will be passed out of your body so a lot of replacement of human skills and that should be a cause of worry to a lot of professionals because where are you we going to make money from right and therefore in this ever changing world which is only accelerating and the disruptions in the technology is creating a lot of challenging environment around us we need to therefore be aware that what are those skills and therefore by the 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 this particular presentation is going to be talking about those skills okay but the backbone of this is nothing but becoming a wealth creator because no matter what technology comes in what uh, automation happens what artificial intelligence goes in somebody will be required to build a business around a certain idea a certain concept and therefore a skill that helps you build business and create wealth those skills are the only skills that will keep you productively employed and will create wealth for you but only wealth doesn't give happiness that's why this particular presentation is all about happiness and therefore allow me to just go through the slides one by one uh, i'm just going to be in this mode only not going into the presentation view so that uh, uh, you know just gives me better control so skills that create material abundance and happiness so certain quotes are there and starts with a quote with, by buddha to keep the body in good health is a duty otherwise we shall not be able to keep the mind strong and clear you yourself as much as anybody in the entire universe deserve your love and affection so before we start talking about happiness or we talk about money all we need to ensure is that we are in the best of physical and mental health so you will have to take out some time so all these slides are talking about getting some time out of your waking hours that you devote to your physical and mental health right so <clears throat> next is discipline so we are into you know covid has only thrown everything out we don't have working hours anymore we don't have enough uh, time for our health we are everything has gone out of uh, the window what we need to do is really create our priorities and be disciplined about first of all health and then about other things and have a goal about everything okay whether it is your professional goal about empowering yourself about certain things or whether it is about reaching certain money earning levels or whether it is about your health that is losing some weight or gaining some weight these can all be goals but then without discipline nothing is going to happen so discipline is the bridge between your goals and your accomplishment beautiful quote so be aware conscious about your discipline okay 
very easy to forget about it in today's kind of times next is maintaining focus we are too distracted today ye bhi kar le wo bhi kar le let's do this let's do that and then at the end you know we forget about what we really need to focus upon so the successful warrior is the average man with laser like focus so that's how important focus is and a camera without focus nobody wants is not the camera even so a person without focus is also not going to accomplish much so always remember your focus at a given point of time when you're working it should be only one thing you can do multitasking but at one given time your focus should be only on one thing next is detailing this is what we are talking about in our b plan 16 chapters is all about detailing why because detailing is important because with detailing only a building becomes a taj mahal otherwise it remains a building right and gone are the days where every building is going to sell you will have to create taj mahals out of your wealth creation ideas your business ideas and that's where detailing is going to become important people without who have now i for detailing are going to be the wealth creators and the will lead a life of one abundance the difference between good and great is attention to detail right then next is deadlines now we are saying that we are going to do this by monday by saturday we are going to do this now deadlines are called deadlines because we should be dead after that but we don't really respect deadlines so the awareness and mindfulness about meeting deadlines and bringing our best by the deadline so that we accomplish our goals is an awareness and is a skill that you must have and if you acquire this and make it a habit and build it into your personality you will always always create a life of abundance or yourself and happiness so empower your dreams with deadlines if it wasn't for the deadlines nothing would get done next is consistency i see at least in today's generation you know we just get to see the spurts of energy but no consistency people don't work consistently and remember when you start working consistently your results continue to be consistent also right it's not that you will be coming today delivering and then going away no you will be creating results also consistently so success doesn't come from what you do occasionally it comes from what you do consistently consistency transforms average into excellence okay these are great thoughts i'm sure that you will all agree with them but the fact is that awareness does not get converted into mindfulness now that's what i'm trying to tell you that just because you are aware that consistency is important but please start practicing it because practicing makes you different okay next is the emotional and spiritual quotient you know there were, when i was doing mba iq was the only thing that was important and then of course people realize that you know when you're talking about leadership when you're talking about team building then emotional quotient is important today we are talking about creative thinking we are talking about think coming out with ideas out of the box right just like that very easily at the drop of a hat you, you should be bubbling with ideas which are really creative which are going to create innovative ideas so how do you you have to have a mind that is very fertile so you can't work with a very fatigued mind most of the time because we are during our waking hours you're doing so many things that your mind is fatigued your body takes rest when you are asleep but your mind is still very active the only way to have a very peaceful mind is through spiritual practices and today you check out even the ivy league schools iims there are now bringing in spirituality into the personality development because how do you create a fertile mind is not by just reading and is not by case studies and it's not by doing a lot of things is by spiritual practices that make your mind a lot more empowered so that in the same amount of time 
you are able to accomplish more than your other peers. And that's where now SQ is getting integrated into daily lives. So SQ, the ability to discern, perceive and judge the spiritual dimensions that are at work in and around you and manage this realm towards a positive outcome. And this is where spirituality in management, spirituality in corporate management has also become a course at the leading business schools, not yet at JBIMS, but hopefully very soon. Most other institutions, they have embraced it. Why? Because the emotional health of students is suffering. Why? Because the, the spiritual uh, aspects of our being, they are being missed in this whole rat race of competition. We have become so money focused that we have forgotten about happiness. And it's the happy people that succeed. The myth is success brings you happiness. No, you have to first look for creating your happiness inside if you want to succeed. So, you know, that is the Guru Mantra. And therefore, the importance of spiritual quotient. So the core skill in social awareness is empathy, sensing what others are thinking and feeling without them telling you in words. Very important when you're building the teams. Very important when you're trying to lead people. Okay, you have to empathize and then you have to sense what they are feeling and then talk in a way that they follow your instructions and they accept you as a leader. So we are not human beings that are here for spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings that are visiting this planet for a human experience. So that is the Indian mythology. They say that the body dies, the spirit doesn't, right? So you, you, there's too much of uh, uh, importance given to this body. A little bit awareness about our spiritual self and our purpose of life. So all this cheating, all the negative things we get into, scheming, etc., all that should go out of your life. And then you will create a very beautiful inner world. And your outer world is only a reflection of your inner world. That is what is spirituality in corporate management. So try and work on a creation of a beautiful inner world. Okay, You will create a lovely outer world for yourself and for people you love. Next is self-motivation. So motivation doesn't last. Neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. Said the Zig Ziglar. So morning when you get up, don't just look at WhatsApp again and go for jokes, etc. You know, whatever your people are sending. Do first give yourself a daily dose of motivation. Two minutes, three minutes, some motivating videos that help you put yourself in a very positive frame of mind to accomplish and give you energy for the rest of the day. Next is willingness to make sacrifices. We all want a life of abundance, but we are not ready to work for it. Typical example you know, is that when we want a life of abundance and we want to create business of our own or we want to empower ourselves, that that requires some work. Maybe two hours of sleep that you will need less or maybe you, some parties you need to get out or maybe some TV programs you have to say no to. Why? Because these three years you've committed to yourself that you want to empower yourself. So are you willing to do that? That's what the question. And that's what we are talking about. Willingness to make sacrifices must be there when you have decided to accomplish something or set anything as a goal. So one half of knowing what you want is knowing what you must give up before you get it. So you do have to give up something before you get something, right? And of course, this is a beautiful slide about success. What you see, this is an iceberg. What you see is success, which is above the water, okay? But what is underneath is persistence, a lot of failures, a lot of sacrifices, a lot of disappointment, a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, which people won't see, right? So remember when you are facing any of these, right? It's all about creating this. 
So it's a good news actually that you're working in the right direction, but you must be willing to make sacrifices. Then next, we whine all the time, okay? Oh, sir, we don't get time. There are so much other projects. There's so many other classes. Tomorrow we have to make presentation. Then day after tomorrow, we have to make this presentation. It's all about time management. Having committed to ourselves, and I can tell you, I told you the other day also, Ivy League schools, executive MBA programs. If you get four hours of sleep on other campuses, you should be lucky. That's what they say. So these three years, you have to accept it's going to be tough life. But after this, you say Ramchandra Ji ko banwas ke baad mila tha na, Ayodhya ka sinhasan, waise hi. You will also get, but how you use these three years is up to you. You can whine, 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 whine and not do this, what is required to be done. Right? But Complaining about a problem without posing a solution is called whining, right? So we have to stop complaining. We have to start working on what life we want and any sacrifice we have to make, we have to love it, not whine about it. Confidence. Trust yourself. Create the kind of self that you will be happy to live with all your life. Make the most of yourself by fanning. How does confidence come? It comes by practice. When I'm asking you to practice three, two, one principle is basically so that you gain confidence. So that today you are applying that three, two, one principle in a certain business situation, which you have chosen to create. But once you become very, you know, once you practice this over and over again, you will get confidence to practice it in any situation. Tomorrow you could be part of a company where you are required to become a wealth creator or you will come up with ideas of a wealth creator where the company recognizes you as a wealth creator, gives you maybe a profit sharing or ESOPs. So that is what we are talking about. Now, when do people whine is when time management goes wrong. So you have to set goals, prioritize work, define time limits, organize resources. Everything is there in this slide. But please manage your time, prioritize. And prioritizing me, health zarur love. Please give. It starts with health. Then it goes to relationship management. Then it comes to money management and professional management. So don't forget that you have to give that time to your wife. If you're married, if that time to your children, if they are around, because it's pointless making money and then losing something that money cannot buy, right? That doesn't give you happiness. So don't be so much after money. I have seen a lot of our students, you know, we meet them with their wife. Next, this thing, oh, what happened? Oh, we got divorced. Why? Well, work pressures. The pressures are fine, but then somewhere you need to understand what you need to sacrifice, what you not need to sacrifice. You cannot sacrifice your health. You cannot sacrifice your relationships because no amount of money will buy these two. Right? Money can always come. So remember your priorities, right? Try to then do your time management with these priorities in mind. So time management is actually life management. Right? Next is listening. We don't listen. We just pretend we are listening but we don't really listen. Listening is a very important skill if you want a life of abundance because the best of leaders have always been the good listeners. A lot of stories around it. Nelson Mandela's beautiful story is here on listening, which is a little long story, but it's there on Google. You can read it, right? The word listen contains the same words as the word silent. Such a beautiful quote. I loved it. That's why it's here. So the skill of listening, this slide is there. Be attentive, ask open-ended questions, ask probing questions, request clarification, paraphrase, be attuned to, and reflect feelings, summarize. So not a very difficult thing to do, but we are waiting to just talk. But I think with your class, you, are, you guys are either pretending to be a great listeners because you don't respond when I'm asking questions, 
but anyway whichever way i would love to assume that you are great listeners so kudos all all the appreciation to you but here is where you fail and which is public speaking if you are going to be always in the listening mode but you are when you required to speak you don't speak or you cannot just come up and make a point which is what i find in your class people don't speak you are to be pushed pushed and pushed to come up and speak this doesn't make you a leader and this is definitely not going to help you create a life of abundance so public speaking is as important as breathing is to life if you don't speak if you don't have ideas if you can't express them in a convincing way forget the life of abundance so this is a must have must have. actually all these skills are must have skills if you want to live a life of abundance and happiness so if you can speak you can influence and if you can influence then you can change lives beautiful quote and then of course ability to adapt quickly and this is where you are in fact when i say that disruptions are happening they are happening all over to the companies within the companies outside in the business environment government policies competitive world everywhere they are happening right and it requires our ability to adapt so all failure is failure to adapt all success is successful adaptation so those of you who are not happy with your jobs please adapt quickly please empower yourself for the future because adapt and change they are hand they go hand in hand okay and of course leadership skills of course there are two styles the slide depicts that where the boss is sitting the other people are pulling and then there is a leader who's leads from the front so that's what i'm trying to tell you that don't you you know within your b plan groups you lead from the front don't wait for other people to come and then you will start brainstorming put your idea every day you know think be always in a continuous thinking mode put it on the group this is what i am thinking about innovation this is how i thinking about competitive being better than the competitor this is how i am thinking about service excellence this is how we will create our service to the customer this is how we will treat our employees this is how we will treat our suppliers put it up on the group lead from the front okay you will have ready made presentations or things to talk about when you are in the thinking mode okay so next is of course team building your this assignment itself is telling me a lot of skills that you need to really possess so what i talked about in the previous slide which was leadership i see that missing in all of you because you would be talking like i have to stop you if this skill was there where you were leading from the front and asking other people to comment on your ideas we wouldn't be having these kind of silent classes where i am forced to really dig it out of you and it it appears that so much of effort i have to make to get you to think and that thinking also is happening in the class not outside the class so what do you think this degree is going to make you or give you a life of abundance sorry it's not you're going to stay where you are even after this degree bad news but it's something that you want to change it then this is the time to change this recording is going to be available please go through it because these are must have skills team building no one can whistle a symphony it takes a whole orchestra to play it so what you are trying to put together as a b plan also shows your team building skills and working together as teams so i'm waiting to see your final plans and there will be a day when you will be on the dais and presenting to a bigger audience continuous learning is the minimum requirement for learning in any field so you will have to continue to learn uh and we are learning that i i, I am doing a lot of things on the computer right now in it area which i never imagined i would be doing including all these google search uh, and your uh, you know so many so many digital marketing things that we are doing which i have to learn at my age but that's the only way 
right? Money management. Money moves from those who do not manage it well to those who do. Okay, so management, money management, is a definite skill that you will need going forward much more than ever in the past. Outsourcing what you can do within the organization, what you can do with your suppliers who become your key partners and do what you do best and outsource the rest. Don't try to do everything. Innovation. Innovation, you have had a session on this and assured innovation, etc. Innovation is the ability to see change as an opportunity and not threat. So entrepreneurship, of course, this is something that uh, you are already, we have talked a lot, we are working on it and we're trying to make you better and better. Second is market. Hello. Sorry, sir, sorry. Yeah, just mute yourself, please. Marketing and sales. You have to tell a story before you can sell that story. So be good at marketing your B plans and selling your B plans. Like it or not, Facebook was not Mark Zuckerberg's idea. There was someone else's idea. Steve Jobs' idea was not Apple, someone else's idea. You can do research and find out whose idea it was. And those people whose idea it was, did not make as much money as these people because these people really sold the idea. So always people who sell the idea are richer than the ones who had the idea. Okay, so you must have therefore marketing and selling skills. And today basic IT and software that everyone needs to understand because it's all about creating your presence on in the digital world, both physical and digital. Right. And then, of course, what is happening is that there's so many innovations happening that are legal and regulatory compliance. That environment is not changed. For example, drones, so many drones technologies and so many applications of drones have come up. But what are the legal requirements around that are still changing? That is what is happening even in the case of you've seen Facebook, etc., where privacy laws and those kind of things. So the basic understanding of how the legal and regulatory compliances will impact your industry in future is something that you must inculcate. And next is, of course, data crunching and AI, how you can use this as an application and integrate into your B plans is very important. And of course, I always say it's not the product or services that make money, it's the people that make money and then talk about people its relationships and networking. So this is a very important skill once you have a startup and once you want to become an entrepreneur or wealth creator. In fact, most of the CEOs of big companies, they're spending time only in building relationships and networking. They're not really doing nitty gritties of business, but they are just building relationships with their key employees, key suppliers, key customers. And that's what they're busy doing. Next is, of course, perseverance, never give up, okay? And if for some reason you see that waste management is not a great idea and therefore you move from waste management to plastic management and that is not something that, uh, so you are being honest with yourself, accepting and then somebody told you, okay, there is a research report on this, uh, whatever, what, what was that? Uh, Jackfruit, so fine, so jackfruit, so jackfruit based edible cutlery. And then we said, nahi yaar, ye nahi. we want to do it. the jackfruit based uh, uh, supplements, nutritional supplements. All that you're trying to do is you're being honest with yourself and accepting the reality despite your ego. Okay, so that you don't become a blackberry, right? That's what is very important. That fine, I can be wrong. Maybe this is another way. Okay, so I'm going to stop uh, the recording now. Stop the screen share so that uh, please, please, please be very much mindful and aware that these are the skills that are needed and therefore 
build these skills as part of your personality okay